Welcome back, everybody. It's another episode of Test Drive, our Test Drive podcast. I'm your host, Lee Baudet. We're going to talk about one of the most recognizable American sport cars in history today on this podcast. With me is Scott Nickerson, who is part of Sport Car USA. Scott, give us a little bio of yourself. Yeah, so uh, part of the reason that this episode is uh, so close to home is Lee and I have worked on the YouTube series Test Drive, where we kind of dive into the history of all these cars. Uh, so I'm, I'm kind of a, a part of creating all that content and writing scripts and shooting all that with Lee. So we kind of both felt like we worked with all of this information pretty closely for a while. Yeah, yeah. And really, you're kind of like the producer of Sport Car yeah. USA. When we do the test drive, Scott's right yep. there. He's the camera guy. He's the guy saying lights, action, that kind of thing. <laughs> So welcome, Scott. I'm glad to have you here. I know you and I both have a passion for sport cars, and there's one in particular that we both really, really enjoy, and that's the Dodge Viper. Yep. And let's face it, that's one of the most iconic sport cars ever made. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, we have uh, our warehouse, and there's always, even yeah. though it's a, the one we have is from the 90s, there's always people that immediately go, oh, that's a Viper. You know. Sport Car USA has a warehouse, but it's in a secret location. Mm -hmm. Everybody says, it's our like, vault. yeah, yeah, Lee, Scott, where's that, where's that warehouse where Sport Car USA? We can't tell you. Nope. Secret location. <laughs> but we've got dozens upon dozens of sport cars yep. that we've pretty much garnered throughout the country, and then some. So let's talk a little bit about this Dodge Viper, Scott. The car started just as a, a I guess it was a concept car in the late 80s. And it went on to have numerous revivals until they would eventually put a full stop on production, which brought a lot of people uh, to tears. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe not, but 1992, it was the first production run of the Dodge Viper. And the car was, well, they, I guess they call it a screaming death trap. <laughs> yeah, they weren't exactly built for safety. No, no, not at all. Not at all. The 92 Dodge Viper, by the way, uh, was a two-seat sport car. And the engine was massive, not a whole lot else to the car. The main thing was the engine and the looks, I would say. Uh, definitely a driver's car, I would say. And if you're looking to have a, a leisure drive and some fun, then I guess you better hold on tight and really pay attention to what you're doing. Yeah, they're, uh, they're a little unforgiving at times. They're, they're known to go off the road if you're not <laughs> being careful. Of course, you know, without all the safety features that modern cars have. Yeah, I remember when I first saw the Dodge Viper on a showroom floor of a Dodge dealership, and I'm here like, holy smoke, look at that thing. And it was all cordoned off, so you couldn't really get next to it. Yep. But you talk about hundreds of people just kind of like standing there staring at this unbelievable car. It definitely had a unique look, too. Oh, it yeah. was mostly hood. For sure. Because they got to fit that engine in there. Yeah, yeah, no question about it. It's something like we'd never seen before. Mm -hmm. And in 1992, the Viper it had that massive V10 engine. And do you know what that produced for horsepower, Scott? So 400 horse, and it was 465 yeah. foot-pound of torque. Yeah, so you got it. even by those standards, it was a pretty powerful vehicle. I would say for a two-seat sports cars, that you know, that's that's a lot. It really is. And you can compare it to things like the Hellcat Red Eye or even the ZL1 Camaro. And you compare those cars, it might not even seem like a lot, but you just can't forget. It also didn't have any safety features to it. Yeah, you know, modern cars, they'll they'll beep at you when you get close to something. And this uh, this car, you couldn't even power lock the doors. I never, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, I never knew that about the Dodge Viper. No power door locks. And if you remember this car, no exterior door handles. I know, we got we got this car in. Yeah. And I, have, I had never seen one in person. I'd only ever seen them in, like, car books when I was a kid growing up and thinking they're cool. And I walk up to the car, and I'm like, how do like how do you open how do you open the door? Yeah, I felt so yeah. stupid. I feel I was like, oh, maybe there's a hidden door release somewhere. Nope. Turns out there is not a handle on the outside. And this this was so many years ago that I, I kind of forgot it never had a roof mm -hmm. <laughs> or windows. Yeah, they had these like weird. The the first ones had these weird plasticky things that you would slide. Amazing. In. Yeah, in bags, you'd right? Zip them. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Crazy. No airbags, of course. No traction control or ABS. Even air conditioning. They say that it wasn't an option until the 1994 model year. Yeah. Well, well you won't have a roof or windows, so I guess. Uh, <laughs> that's what I was thinking. You, like you don't need air conditioning, right? No. You're going to be going so fast. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, you know, you keep your hat on if you have a hat when you're driving <laughs> this car. 
Dodge decided to make the, uh, you know, this is a beast of a vehicle. And this was back in the early 90s that they decided to build this thing. And one of the reasons they built the Dodge Viper is they wanted to save Chrysler. Yep. Chrysler, you may recall, you're a lot younger than I am, but they were in a lot of financial trouble. And they were always operating in the Reddit scene. And the, the Viper was really a model of vehicle that was trying to pull Chrysler into the black. Yep. And yep. did it work? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe for a little we'll bit. <laughs> Remember this guy? His name is Bob Lutz. And uh, this is the guy that wanted a two-seat sports car that would be along the lines, I guess, I don't know, a Jaguar E-Type or even a Shelby Cobra at the time. And you can see a lot of those stylings in the final designs of the Viper. If you really take a close look at that Viper, you will see some of the styling uh, designs that, you know, incorporated into the Viper with those two cars that I just mentioned. Yeah, especially looking at a lot of those Jaguar E-types, they have very big fronts. Like the, yeah, like the engine yeah. compartments are a lot bigger. Um, like with the Viper, too, it's like after the back seat, it's a tiny trunk and, you know, you're not too far away from the rear drive wheels of that car. So uh, Yeah, I'm amazed at how wide that car is mm -hmm. because, I, I, like, like, say if you're in the streets of Boston, okay, you know how narrow don't the streets park. are? There's I, just no way. I can't imagine paralleling a you know, car. Like cars that. coming at you, you know, the opposite direction. I don't think there's room for two cars in, a, like, a Boston side street kind of yeah. thing. So they also um, met this guy. His name was Tom Gale. And Tom Gale... Actually, you know, Tom Gale was already there at Chrysler, so it was Bob Lutz and the other crew members, as I call them. They got together with Tom, and Gale said, hey, you, you guys have free reign over this project. So Gale started as an engineer at Chrysler, then later became part of the design team, which if I had to be on a team, that's the, that's the team I'd want to be on, the right. design team. Sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah, you probably start out with clay, right? Yep. So. Yeah, they made these giant <laughs> clay models Amazing. of the car. It's, yeah. It's wild. Yeah, but Gail, he designed a lot of the Chrysler models, even like the, the Dodge Ram pickup series, minivans, and even, I love this car, the Chrysler Prowler. They don't make cars that look like that anymore. No, no. Maybe no, for I, good reason. I knew a guy that had a Chrysler Prowler, and it was purple. Why not? Every, exactly. Why not? Everywhere this guy went, it seems like he had throngs of people. Oh, just yeah. you know, if you're gonna have a car that looks like that, you might as well double down. Oh my goodness! Make it yeah. purple. Yeah, that was such a cool car, and even the Lamborghini Diablo yep. is part of the models that um, this Gale guy worked on and helped conspire. So I was thinking, you know, the Dodge Viper must have had a lot of inspirations. Back in the day, like from the Shelby Cobra, you know, we've done series on uh, the Shelby um, and, and all of the great cars that Shelby has produced. So I guess they wanted to build something that would compete like in that space. Mm -hmm. And as a result, Carol Shelby, who's renowned and just beloved by so many people, passed away, unfortunately, a few years ago. He was a consultant on Team Viper. I don't think a lot of people know that. No, I mean, you always think about Dodge and, and Viper, or sorry, Dodge and Ford as mm. competitors. Yeah. So the fact that he kind of worked on both of those, uh, you know, a lot of people would think that they are kind of competing in a similar space. They had this show, the, the North American International Auto Show, which is very famous, very mm -hmm. well attended. And that's when the first Viper prototype was built, way back in 1989. And of course, it was an instant hit being shown there to so many people. And believe it or not, Dodge would go on to make 285 Vipers, which doesn't sound like a whole lot, does it? No, it was a it was a pretty limited run just because they hadn't they have never they never ventured in anything like that. Yeah, that's back in 1992 that they did that, but 285, but I guess I, I, when I think of something like that, I think of like the um DeLorean. They didn't make too many of those either. No, I can imagine uh having one of those Vipers. If you have it in really good shape, I can only imagine what it goes for. Yeah, yeah. Chrysler, I never knew this. They own Lamborghini mm -hmm. and other sport cars that the Diablo had in production. I guess it was around 1994 that Chrysler sold to an investment group. And that whole idea of the massive V10 engine, that pulled from Lamborghini as well. Had to. Mm -hmm. They called it Team Viper. 
And it used some of the same members from the Lamborghini team to construct the Viper, which made a whole lot of sense. And then there's that Tom Gale guy again, as I mentioned earlier. He had Rain to do whatever he wanted with that project. And he was the really responsible for the exterior design, the unique exterior design of both the Diablo and the Viper. You look back at Dodge Viper's engine block, Scott, and it was converted from their iron block V10 that was originally for Dodge trucks. And then they adapted it into a lighter aluminum block for their new dynamic sports car. Yeah, I, uh, my dad, growing up, we had one of those, uh, I want to say it was called an SRT pickup. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. And he would always tell me as a kid that, like, oh, my truck has a Viper engine in it. And I'm like, oh, that's so cool, which <laughs> it's not 100% true. It's not, right. um, you know, they're not pulling the Viper engine straight out of the and putting it into trucks. They just start with the same block. And yep, that was your dad that had that? Yeah, it was yeah. a white one. It is definitely in a vehicle graveyard right now. So when, so when he went down the street, was the ass end on the pavement and then the front end up in the air? Not. <laughs> it was definitely a fun <laughs> truck, and it sounded cool, but it, it was not the Viper. Yeah, but you know what about the Viper that everybody loved is that it was built in the United States. Yep. They've always – Yeah. It's, even Dodge now, that's like one of their big selling points yeah. Is, yeah. American muscle. And that's why that's one of the reasons I love Sport Car USA because it's about American muscle cars. Yep. Right? So but the Viper, it went through so many errors of design and features over the years. I don't think anybody has any idea what this car's been through. But there's one thing that they never changed and that it was American made. Yep. Raw muscle, right? Yep. So love it. Love it. Ninety six, Dodge released the Viper G T S. Now with this model, we saw a few new features pop up. Like believe it or not. They had exterior door handles. Woohoo! You could get into the vehicle. Yes, finally. I'm not done yet. Standard air conditioning, windows, and an actual roof in 1996. <laughs> I guess the roof had to have a, a special design, or it was a special design. And it, it even had a name. It was called the Double Bubble Roof. Never knew that. Yep. I wonder where they came up with that. Maybe a lot of double bubble gum <laughs> yeah, right. at the time was popular. <laughs> I, I don't know, but... Uh, the roof design, uh, it gave the driver and the passenger more headroom, which was nice. And they did that because a lot of them were wearing helmets. Yep. It was a big track, track right. forward vehicle. It did very well on the track, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it was, it was made in the coupe, of course, the, the Dodge Viper GTS. And all, although it did look similar in design to the original, the GTS only shared about 10% original parts. So the new design was much more aerodynamic. Less of a death trap when cornering, especially. And the GTS also added the first full-length exhaust. No longer had the signature side ex exit exhaust. That's a si signature side exit exhaust. Easy for me to say. <laughs> than its predecessor. Yep. So I guess that means you won't get burned on the ankles anymore. Yeah, I know. That was such an interesting design to have a hot pipe come out right where you get into the vehicle. But they, yeah. they added a little bit of horsepower on the 96 Model 2. They added uh, 50 extra horsepower, so it was, it was slowly creeping up and getting a little more powerful, and, and yeah, they no longer burned your calves. You remember the Corvettes, the early Corvettes that mm -hmm. had the side exhaust? You yep. have to be real careful getting out. Yeah, they get hot, especially a car like that. Oh, you're yeah. going to be hammering on it. Yeah, definitely very toasty on the legs yeah. if you aren't careful. So back in 1999, when, when you go up a few more years from what we've been talking about, Dodge released the Viper ACR. The ACR stood for American Club Racer, and it was a race car. The ACR had BBS wheels. They had the, uh, that upgraded suspension, and I guess that included a five-point racing harness. Dodge taking this car more and more toward track performance and trying to make it street legal race as well, which is not mm -hmm. always an easy thing to do. Right. That's, you know, like what Dodge is doing now. They have their um, their Dodge, uh, what is it, the Dodge Demon 170, which is like their final yeah. run, which is a thousand horsepower Challenger that you can put a drag racing parachute on. Oh, yeah. But also it's street legal. Yeah. So this was like, you know, they're kind of doing the similar. Love that. Not to the extreme that the Challenger is, but. Yeah, yeah. You look at like today's sport cars. I own a Corvette, a 2020. It's the mid-engine. And it's 0 to 60 in 2.8 seconds, Yep, which is screaming. It really is. I, I, that Corvette that I have, it's not the fastest car, but it's one of the quickest cars out there. I mean, 2.8 is very, very quick. Mm -hmm. 
the ACR, getting back to the Viper, it had a 0. 0.60 in 4.5 seconds. Which is not slow. No, it that's, is not. That's You're still going to feel it. You're going to get pinned to your seat with that still. Oh, there's no question. You're going to be sitting right back in your seat oh, yeah. for sure. And the top speed was 180 miles per hour. Again, pretty fast by today's standard. But in 99, that was like oh, blow off the doors fast. Yeah. There wasn't a lot of times you were going 180 miles an hour. Yeah. And Dodge actually partnered with a racing team to develop the Viper into a real race car in 1999. And they did that to further develop the GTSR. Man, there's no way I can remember all these. A lot I, of I've got, I've got a lot of notes here, yeah. friends. I really do. Two years span uh, with the GTSR, they won 16 out of 18 races. And it really became a dominant force on the racetrack. Unbelievable. Jump up to 2003, it'd be one of the first major facelifts of the Viper. This is when the headlights became more aggressive. The body style looked a little bulkier, if you can imagine, because it already was bulky as far as I'm <laughs> concerned. But they added 50 horsepower to that 500 horse. Uh, that's what I guess that's what it ended up being, 500 yep. horse? Yeah, so it started, the first gen was 4, 450, and then they slowly increased it up to 5 okay. this year. Okay, right. And then I guess in 2003 to 2005, that time frame, Viper became only available in a convertible. Yep. Do you still have to wear helmets? I, I would. <laughs> I'd wear a helmet even if the Viper had a roof. I know. I know. And I wonder how that, that car handles. I know it's track ready and a lot of track experience, but on the open road, I've never driven one. Right. Did you drive the one that Sport Car USA has? I didn't. Very few people drove it. Yeah, yeah. Well, that might be a goal of ours this spring and summer for sure. Take it for a ride. The 06 Viper model would return the GTS Coupe, and they, you know, that's the one that had the hard top. But unfortunately, in, in seven, 2007, the Viper would go out of production because, believe it or not, Scott, Chrysler was once again in Who financial thought? trouble. I just remember seeing Lee Iacocca on all those commercials trying to save the company. Please, please yes. buy a car. <laughs> <laughs> yes, pretty much. I think they came out with a K car that really uh, helped Chrysler. Yeah, that was, the, yeah, I'm not sure what year that was. Yeah, there was that period where everyone was going with the, the little tiny K cars for fuel efficiency and all that. Yeah. Once they cracked down. Oh, on exactly. That. Yeah. And the K car was kind of like a square car. Yeah, they're, they're not, not, very, not really not attractive. But like no. I've said on, few, on, uh, podcasts from the past, I could see a car that was the ugliest car ever 40 years ago. Right. My thinking is this car is ugly, like the Pacer or even like a K car. You see it at a car show, it's like, oh, wow. Right. It's like bell bottoms. Maybe they'll make a comeback. Or they, they already have. They <laughs> already have. Go check my closet. <laughs> so they thought that was the end of the Viper again. But in 2008, they relaunched it again. I guess they're thinking this is the best thing that we're producing these days. So let's go back to it. But this time it had an all new look and new grill, headlights, and the horsepower increased too to 600. That's like 100. That's a, that's a significant jump. Very significant jump right there. Fiat bought Chrysler in 2009. A lot of people forget that. And in July of the year 2009, Chrysler announced the end of the Viper production again. Yep. And just when you thought the Viper was back, it's gone again. Yep. They, they, they were like, all right, no more Viper. A year later, like, just kidding, we're going to do the Viper again. And then after that year, they're like, oh, never mind. Well, I guess you got to look at it. The Viper was... It's not like everyone's buying a Viper. Exactly. It, it's, it's, uh, it has its own niche. Mm -hmm. And two-seater, it was expensive to build because expensive it was so buy. unique, expensive yeah. to buy. So they probably looked at the... Tech, the checkbook and saying, yeah, we're losing money again, guys, so we need to eliminate a few things. So Viper went goodbye again. Well, there's a reason, like, Corollas are the best-selling car in the world in the because world. you can yeah. get them for twenty grand or whatever, you know? Like, they're mm -hmm. they're not $100,000 two-seat sports cars. Right, yeah. And you don't need a helmet with a Corolla either. Right, well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the Viper, the, it didn't go away, finally. It did not go away again. Nope, nope. It returned in 2013. And they called it the Phase 15 Viper. Again, I think this is the third or fourth time it had a brand new face. But more horsepower, 40 more horsepower. So we're up to 640 now with the Viper. They released this, like, really unusual 
orange color. It was an option for that Viper. The ACR model made its return, and it was a track monster. I mean, it produced 1,700 pounds of downforce, became the sixth fastest production car in history, and the Viper dominant on the track, and it competed with some of the world's fastest sports and hyper cars. Yep. Yeah. Right. I mean, leave it to Mopar to do. Yeah. To do that, like going back to that Challenger again, they're like, "What mm -hmm. do we need to do that is so excessive that nobody needs?" Yeah. And then we'll do it times ten. And then <laughs> well, Sport Car USA sells a lot of Challengers. They're yeah, they're I popular. Mean, they're very popular. Well, they have that old style look a little bit to them yeah. too. They still have that like classic muscle shape. And you know what? They never really changed, except they made the wide body. Yep. But the actual look of the Challenger they haven't when been it came too drastic. Back, yeah, as not as at all. Not at all. I always, changes. I always loved the front end of the Challenger, and the back end I didn't care for that much, or I don't care for that much. But it's not awful. It's a good looking car. I like the Charger yeah. between the two. Yeah, they're, the Charger. Yeah, and they're quote unquote practical. I guess. Yeah. Well, when I <laughs> pretend to be a police officer, I borrow the Charger that Sport Car USA <laughs> has. And, you know, darked out windows, etc. The but the Viper did uh, die again. It did. Uh, Dodge, they celebrated their 25th anniversary and the final year of the Viper production, and they had six serialized special edition models. And what year was that? That's 13, right? Yeah, 2013, I think, was yep. the last year that they made the Viper. Last final, final year, they made the Viper. Get a, get a load of this. Okay, so they made different editions of the Dodge Viper, including the 128th edition ACR. Make sure you write this stuff down. The there Viper, yeah, the Viper GTS R Commemorative Edition ACR, the Viper Snakeskin Edition GTC, the Viper Snakeskin Edition ACR, Viper Voodoo 2 Edition ACR, and I think this is the last one, the Viper Dodge Dealer Edition ACR. What is the difference between all of those? I don't know. A lot of them were cosmetic. Yeah. So there's differences between the like the ACR is like their track. Uh, I believe that is like their more track ready one, right. and then the GTSR is more of their like. None of them are really for street. They're all track cars. Yeah. But, uh, a lot of them were just different cosmetic things. Some of them had bigger wings, stuff like that. So those were quite a few different models and additions to produce. So I've got a question for you, Scott. When do you think was the Final Viper rolling off the assembly line. Don't look at it, those notes over there. Uh, so they start. They came. They came back in 2013. They did. They, they did. They didn't have a very long run. Not bad. Um, yeah. I definitely was still in high school. <laughs> okay. To 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 date myself, uh, I was definitely still in high school when they stopped making them. But uh, when was the last? The last Viper rolled off the assembly line, August 16th. 2017 and what's cool about this is it rolled off in the same red color that the original came in 25 years prior i think that's, that's really a cool really cool idea right there so viper being revived so many times what do you think is it going to come back again i don't know it's interesting <laughs> i think it would be in a in a perfect world it'd be nice if it came back yeah. um but I almost find it hard to believe until there's like the next phase in the car world because you know they're phasing out a lot of the, even just big V8s. So that's v, the key right there. A V10, you know, that's <laughs> that's even more hard to bring. Yeah, back. would it be a shame for the Viper to come back electric? I think it could be cool. Corvettes, if they just keep back. the body shape, not coming back, but Corvette's gonna have an electric car. Yeah, they got the the E Ray. Right, right. I don't um, know. It's interesting. I don't know. The body shape is so like prolific i think yeah. you're either going to get people that are like this is really cool or there's going to be the purists that are like this is the worst thing you could have done you're like ruining the legacy of the car yeah so some I things think, you could just let just, yeah, you could let it just die. let it go let yeah. it go but they bring everything back i mean sometimes they bring back vehicles and you look at it, it's like what this is a nova mm -hmm. this is a blazer this is whatever I like the impalas yeah <laughs> yeah i mean there's one car that's never gone away and that's the ford mustang it has not gone away. That and the Corvette. And I the guess Corvette. they've stayed. True. They've yes. never ceased production. Right. I think the Viper will come back. I do. 
on a smaller scale. In some way. In some way, it will. They're going to... It won't be this. It yeah. won't be a V10, yeah. I don't think. I think that's going to be hard to yeah. to get through uh, emissions. Because as... that name really has has some meat to it. Mm-hmm. It really does. Well, everyone knows what a Viper is. Yeah. A lot of people haven't seen one. Right. Yeah, like, I didn't. I hadn't seen yeah. one. I just heard of them. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm thinking the Viper, the, the nice thing about the Viper, it's always going to remain a classic piece of sports and muscle car history. That's never going to change. And I'm thinking the values, obviously, like everything else, can only go up. Yep. Yeah, there's there's some people that have um, pretty rare collector. I've, I've looked at, like, not actually buying one, but just looking at some of the, the newest generation, like ACRs and stuff like that. Yeah. They're hundreds of thousands. They are not <laughs> attainable for most people. Yeah. So... So that's going to wrap up our Viper podcast today. I'm Lee Baudet, your host. My guest, Scott Nickerson, who's a guy uh, that does an awful lot for Sport Car USA. (laughs) Any final thoughts, Scott, on the Viper? I think that just about does it. It's it's a pretty iconic vehicle, and it was fun to do a lot of projects, I guess you could say, and kind of show off that Sport Car USA has one. it's not every day we get to see one. This is the first one I've seen, like I said. So it's cool that we get access to it and we can kind of play with it and show the world the cool stuff that we have. Yeah, and Sport Car USA, as we mentioned earlier, has a garage full of sport cars. They are for sale. Undisclosed so, location. So, yes, an undisclosed location. If somebody wanted to buy a sport car from Sport Car USA, what would they do, Scott? Well, they could check out our website, uh, sportcarusa.com. We've got tons of stuff on there. Uh, the Viper is on there. So... All right. Thanks for coming today, Scott. I'm Lee Baudet, your host of Sport Car USA, our podcast. We shall return with another episode soon. And remember, let's never forget the men and women serving this great country of ours. Goodbye, everybody.